Good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Today is Thursday, so welcome, welcome. Let me introduce myself if you haven't been in one of my other classes. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Libraries, the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, Uchi Creek, and now the Grovetown Library because we have our new building, of course. And very glad that you're here with me today. So hello, <laughs> Evans. Hello, CSRA. Hello, Augusta. Hello, North Augusta. Hello, Georgia. And hello, the world on YouTube. Okay. So welcome, welcome. Uh, of course, we're doing all our classes virtually and staying home and staying safe right now. So we're not having any on-ground classes. So we're doing our videos online like this. So before we get started with our Raspberry Pi project, let me just go ahead and say, feel free to post any kind of questions you have in the chat. And just do remember that you all oh, we are on YouTube here, so you do have to be logged into YouTube to be able to post a question or a um, to like or subscribe too. So you do have to be logged in. So the big question I always start off with is how can I help? Okay. So last time we kind of started our music uh music box music player box with buttons <laughs> project we're going to finish that today and uh, maybe we'll get to another one we'll see we'll have to finish this one up or we'll try to add on to this one and change a few things too so on tuesday we did our microsoft word class for 2019 version we covered a lot of basic stuff and a lot of things that 2019 has featured as well that video is still up and available also, on Wednesday, meaning yesterday, we actually did our Raspberry Pi Part 1 to this project. So if you want to go back and see about that, I'm also going to include the, the link to the uh, website that lists everything that we need for our project. So you could start from here if you wanted to. Uh, but if you want to go back and watch that video, you can see us putting the buttons together and everything. Also, yesterday, we did an Excel uh, class. 2019 basics we did a little we learned a little bit of something new and one of the things that I learned new that I shared with everybody is how to do the drop-down menus in Excel the fun thing about it was uh, a little thing popped up from Microsoft saying hey do you want to learn how to do the drop-down new feature so that was pretty neat so we were covering something that Microsoft felt was a new feature of course this morning we're doing our Raspberry Pi project with me <laughs> We'll finish up with our little music GPIO music box. And this afternoon we're going to be doing PowerPoint. So come join me for that as well. Here's the schedule for what all we have going on for this month. Okay. So today's two classes will finish up. Uh, of course, the classes for this week. We're going to be off a week. And then we're going to come back on the 22nd and do photography basics. And on the 23rd, we're going to be doing a gadget help, which is a stop, uh, stop by, stop in, <laughs> a drop in uh, virtual class. And I'm, of course, doing all my classes live here. So if you come when we're doing a live class, you can ask questions and everything. But that's a gadget help on the 23rd. We're going to be doing a photography class. Uh, most of the time, I mean, excuse me, previously, this has been a photo editing class only but now we're going to add layers to it so we're going to cover making a composition using our free uh, software called GIMP which is Photoshop like and then we push the virtual scrapbooking to a new class called printing and virtual scrapbooking also on the the ten, uh, excuse me on the 24th we're going to be doing a chess class so come join me for that and on the 30th we're going to be creating videos and editing basics uh, using our photo, uh, the photos app that comes free with Windows 10. So make sure that you're all up to date for that and you're good to go. Okay. Just a little side note our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or you can call the library with questions Monday through Friday. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
uh, for updates and you'll get notifications when we go live or anything, me or any other programs. Also, we're actually trying to get our own uh, web, if I can talk, we're trying to get our own uh, YouTube address. We actually have to have 100 subscribers to get our own special YouTube address. Right now, it's a very long address with just letters and numbers. But if you are searching for our YouTube channel, you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and our channel will pop right up. All right, so let's go ahead. I'll come back. So this is kind of a fun class. The idea of this is that we have uh, an actual all day class that we do doing Raspberry Pi introduction and this is kind of addition to that. Now I'm actually going to include let me go ahead and get that for a second. So before we get started, anybody have any questions? Here we go. Now, the interesting part about this is not only is this a you know we're doing some fun projects but also I will kind of reference our handout the original uh, uh, physical computing with the Raspberry Pi as well because it does have our GPIO pins on it pin list so if you're not familiar with that just kind of look at the handout I'll kind of reference back and forth with that now for this project we actually already have our um, buttons already rigged up and everything which I'm going to turn on the other camera in just a second and just a little side note here's kind of our layout of how our GPIO pins this is a um, labeler here um, I don't have one of these with me I actually have a different one but I think we can use this because the interesting thing is I can just count back and forth remember it does have uh, 3 volts is 3.3 uh, our 3V3 is 3 volts of power, 5 is 5 volts of power, and G and D is ground, and anything else that says GP, that's our general purpose uh, pin. So that will correspond when we do our code here in just a minute. Okay, So I've got everything ready. So let's go ahead and let's minimize that, and let's bring back up our project that we're working on. <laughs> And it's on the Raspberry Pi website, and they call it a GPIO pin music box. But I think it's kind of a little bit more of, you know, a sound machine, which is kind of neat. And then just kind of cover what we're going to make here in a second. I'll play this. And the address of that is projects.raspberrypi.org forward slash en forward slash projects forward slash gpio dash music dash box or just type into Google GPIO uh, music box and it usually pulls right up at the beginning. So let's go ahead and I'll disappear and I'll bring up our camera. Yay! my head has turned into a camera so now you can see a project here and we're actually going to take it and show you what we did yesterday so yesterday we wired up all our wires and we have our big speaker here too so here's our yellow red green and blue and we did do our code on our Raspberry Pi uh, to have everything laid out okay with our GPIO pins and let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, we talk about what we did yesterday so first we set up our project and we copied all our samples to the special directory that we need to copy it to and then we actually did a conversion we're just following along I'm a big believer and let's go ahead and let's just do the recipe <laughs> And then if we do want to make changes, we can later, okay? So 
uh, if we did it for the if we do it for the second time, or if you're going to teach it in the class or show someone else how to do it. So basically, their instructions are the Raspberry Pi already comes with a bunch of sound uh, samples in this folder, but they're FLAC files, and apparently our Python, or at least the way that they're going to tell us to do it, is actually needs them to be WAV files. So we actually have to convert them to being a WAV file. So we have this big long uh, terminal uh, command to do and it, it worked. Actually worked the second time we tried and it turned all our samples to waves. Okay. What's the difference? It just means that waves are just more uniform. It's an older format. It's a very large sized format than like mp3 or anything like that or mp4 so not really that great for you know storing sounds or whatever music and then we started our our mu and then we started doing our coding okay so let me go ahead and I'm actually connecting to our Raspberry Pi in a way that I don't have to plug into the screen and it's going to turn on the VNC and I'll be able to connect to it virtually so I'm going to give that just one minute we go okay so now we're connected to our Pi and I did this yesterday and it worked out pretty well I think so I'm gonna have it just kind of split screened on us so we're actually connected to our virtual Pi uh, we're actually connected to our Raspberry Pi I don't know why I said virtual it's a virtual Pi and let's go ahead and let's start talking let's open up our me me <laughs> and in a little bit I'll probably turn off the camera because we'll be doing our coding I'm just going to load up our file that we were doing yesterday Oh, that's right. We hadn't really started doing our coding yet, have we? No, we did not. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start talking about our coding here. So we actually have our sounds already and everything. We started me. This actually talks about playing sounds if you wanted to try it out to make sure it's working and everything. And let's go ahead and I'm going to turn my speaker on and it's going to talk to us for a second. Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth is connected. Line in mode. Line in mode. Okay, so on here, let's go ahead and make sure our sound is working. And I'm going to have to go to, where is it? There it is. The folders we made. Here's my samples now, and now we have FLC files, FLAC files, and WAV files. Yay! That means it's working. Okay, so now that we know that's working, we can close that. And let's go ahead and start typing in our code a little bit. So for the first thing we need to do is we need to do an initial import for Pi game. So let's do that. Okay. We're going to save it. Oh, that's what it is, I think. 
Yeah, because it saved it in a different folder. Yeah, I had to I have to save it into. Let's see if I can reopen that then. It wants me to save it to where the files are. There it is. I knew we had already done that yesterday. That's funny. Nope. Okay, so started going down here and typing in our So these are the sounds we're going to choose. And let's go ahead and talk about our code down here. Now this is a very, very long code. So what I did yesterday actually pulled up our project on the Raspberry Pi and then I got to copy paste instead of having to Okay, so I'm going to close. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and copy this. Oh, well, this will kind of get us started. Okay. I think, that's, I think that's what I was typing. Yeah, because it starts off with, yeah. Yeah, because it's that and that. And then we're choosing the files, so we know what we want. And then we're gonna give them different names. Okay, so that is There we go. So now, let's see. All right, then create a Python object that links to one of these sound files. Give the files its own unique name, for example, drum. So this file is called drum, okay? Create the name object for your main sounds. So our suggestion is the symbol, snare, and bell, okay? So I'm basically going to just kind of edit what we have there. So the second one we're gonna call symbol. Now this is just so it's easier for me. So this is our, um, shoot, uh, our variable. So we're telling what our variable is. So when we do our code later, all we have to do is just call it symbol or one of the other things, okay? And it's file name. Let me see if I can do this. So basically we want our symbol to be Uh, it says drum symbol. Okay, so let's find it. Drum symbol hard is what it says. Drum symbol hard. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so that's what we want it to be. I should actually copy that name. So drum symbol, so our symbol one should be ready. All right, now our next one, we want it to be snare. So it's drum snare hard is what it's called. All right, so drum snare hard. going to copy that name just so I know it's right and remember our first attempt is always fail okay F A I L first attempt is fail So, if something's wrong with your code and this won't work, we'll know why, because it's going to code in there somewhere. Okay, so drum cowbell, it says drum cowbell. More cowbell. That's right. All right. Now, <laughs> all right. So we're actually going to add one and we're going to say drum with play. Okay. So let me make sure. I believe that means it's going to play the sound. So we have this. Okay. So after we've done this code, we can then add this is kind of to make sure it's going to work so drum oh cool that's cool play open parentheses close parentheses so that means that this is basically our files to load and then this means it's actually going to do something so let me hit run. It's going to ask me to save. Oh, well, maybe it did save. So save. Okay, and then we got our sound, didn't we? So I'll tell it to stop. And we'll get it to play it again. There we go. Say hello. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so let's get it to try the other noises. So let's do symbol this may sound like a big mess we'll see i'm not sure if it's set to play the sound or play one sound and wait so that sound finishes and then play the next sound we'll see <laughs> it played it all at the same time didn't it now of course i could have put in a wait like we had talked about with the, this is talking about adding on, you know, knowing code and then knowing what else you can do with it. So in our other class, we actually have a wait code. Okay. And I should be able to show that real quick. Sleep. There's our sleep, but we'll also have to tell it to import sleep as well. So we could do that. I'm going to test my extra skills here, I guess we'll say. So I'm going to tell it from time. 
this is the kind of stuff I like add extra stuff and then sometimes it doesn't work and then I go well why didn't that work all right so from time import sleep and I want this to where is it sleep for one second that should be plenty and then go down and it'll play the next one all right let's try that it may or may not work we will see there you go perfect okay now it's a little bit of extra but the cool part about coding is we learn a little bit of code and you're like I know that there's another code that I've done before let's see if that works so there we go we've learned something from a previous class now haven't we all right so let's get it to play I gotta do the sleep again one all right let's do snare go okay let's do sleep by the way the one means one second uh, if you want to do half a second you just put in decimals like 0. 0.5 here we go oh I do need to put in the next code all right so bell Yeah, okay. That means we're working. Yay! I may actually leave that there because uh, that means I can always do a sound check before we do our, our next part. So I'm going to do save. Okay, so let's go down our list here. So we did our play. We ran our check and it worked. Yay. Okay, so let's go ahead Next, it's going to talk about our buttons, which I believe our buttons are already right. And it talks about our GPIO pins a little bit here on the left side. Okay. Which the handout does that as well. To do a check, check. And then this is talking about connecting up our buttons. So if you didn't see the previous uh, class, Basically, what we've done is we've done this this system. Instead of just doing uh, having to have a whole bunch of separate chords, we actually have it set up so that. And I'll turn my camera on. We actually have it set up so our rail system comes in. So here's our rail. So instead of it, so with the res, excuse me, with the breadboard, we have rows where we can plug in here and those connect. And but the big connection is these two, the rail system on the left. And this is actually the first project I've done that actually uses the rail system. So it's pretty neat, pretty new for me too. So the rail system, the big thing is we have a bunch of buttons here and we want them instead of having to run constant cables back because we actually would run out of ground on our uh, Razor Pi. We just want to connect it to one ground. So here we are, here it connects up to our ground and then our basically our buttons connect to the other uh, the rail, the negative on the rail here, and we only have to connect one wire for ground going back. So we only have five wires coming from the Raspberry Pi. Four for the button and one for to go back and the other wires are to connect the ground to the ground rail and there we go. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. If not, watch the previous video. Let's click and show we've done it. Yay. Okay, and we actually connected it up to the same uh, pins that they have in our example, even though they don't tell us. This is one of those things of, it's like they're kind of generally telling us, oh, it's gonna has a little, 
slide thing here. There we go. There we go. So it shows us what to do, and it actually gives a suggestion. Oh, and the hint gives a suggestion. That's right. So we connected to the 4, 7, 27, and 10. I did not realize that, so I actually went forward and looked at the code, and the code was those GPIO pins or general purpose or G, J, uh, GP pins. Okay. Oh, good. There's somebody. Oh, here's like a little video. So I have my four buttons. Okay. And they're all in a line on a bedboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect one leg of each button to a numbered GPIO pin. Now, it doesn't really matter which GPIO pins you use, as long as you remember and take that into account in your code. So we're going to connect the same ones as they do in the example, just so our code will be easier to figure out later. So here, for instance, I've used 17 for the first one, but you could use any pins that you wanted, really. So that's the last button connected to a GPIO pin. I now have to wire them all up to ground. So I'm going to connect the ground pin on my Raspberry Pi to that negative rail on the breadboard. And then what I can do is each of the other legs of the buttons, I can use a male-to-male -male jump lead and wire each of those into that common ground rail. And then all my buttons will be wired up to ground as well. All right, very good. That's a helpful little video. Okay, so let me close that up. Let's keep going. So now we're gonna wire up our buttons. Now we're gonna tell it what GPIO is what, okay? So if we look at our code here, all right, now I have this little bit of extra code. So we can hear our sounds. All right, so let's look at this. When the button is pressed, the program should call a function such as drum play. However, when you use an event such as a button press to call a function, you'll need to use the brackets, okay? This is because the program must only call the function when the button is pressed rather than straight away. So in, the, in this case, you just need drum play, okay? And there shouldn't be anything. Yeah, that's our talking about what our labels are. So basically, and the four stands for uh, the GP four on our um, bread. Uh, excuse my Raspberry Pi. First step one of your buttons. Remember to use the number for the GPIO pins that you have used rather than the numbers in the example. So again, I've tried to make it so it's the same. So let's go ahead and type that. So first we have to start with labeling what the button is, okay? And then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna give it action, okay? So when the button, the button has a name, you can name it whatever you want, okay? But make sure that your capitalization uh, matches, okay? So I'm gonna go down to the next line and we're going to do button, 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 who's got the button, drum. Like I said, I'm going to do exactly as our example right now. Drum equals the capital button. And I've had many students where, see that, where it pops up here? If I click that, it should, oh yeah, it's, it's telling me that I'm doing the right thing, I guess. Uh, open parentheses 
and it gives you this me gives you little um, hints and stuff okay and it is four close parentheses all right now now that we've done that let's check it off that's a good feeling we checked it off didn't we all right to our next code now that we actually have a variable connected up with our button okay so b T N underscore drum equals button four. Okay, and we're letting it know what it is. It's a button. Okay. Now let's do the and I'll do a space because we're gonna change be adding more in a second. So button, ooh, it already comes up. Because we have a variable here, it already knows. There we go. If I do a double click, it does it when because it knows it's a button because we've labeled it as a button when pressed in our previous class um, excuse me the one we do with the handout the introduction we actually do it so we have a button press and it waits for us when we press the button it'll come up on the screen and say like hello or something and then I have students change the name so again look back at the handout because that project's in there. Equals drum dot play. And it gives us a little bit of help. Okay, so let's run our code, run the program, and press the button. You don't hear the sound, play, then check the wiring button. Like I said, I decided to keep this on there. That may get annoying, but we're only doing it a little bit here. Here we go. Ah, and then we got an error message. Mm, did I type something wrong? Let's see. Let's see. B and T equals button. Let's see. Line module button. Name error button is not defined. Okay, so what if I... Oh, the thank you. So up here at the top, we needed the import button. I forgot something actually pretty important. So we have our import here. So let's go back up and we have to import our button. So from GP and we'll, okay, so this will only go so far with its suggestions. It's kind of like it's a finishing the word suggestion. All right, so let's hit save. All right, so we should hear four sounds and then no error message. Well, we get error again. We didn't get any sounds that time either, did we? Huh, okay. Oh, find the community, blah, blah, blah. To module from import button. Oh, I did not type zero. See? It's the little things. All right, here we go. <coughs> Okay, now if I hit, I think it's the yellow. <gasps> it sounds a little different every time I hit it. All right, success. Success. Okay. So now it's going to want us to figure out uh, how to do the rest of the code, I am sure. I'm going to stretch this a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down. So we did that. Success. Always got to check our code. We did our button. It worked. All right. We heard sounds. Okay. Now, what do we need to do? Well, we need to actually do the same code 
for the rest of our buttons. And let's see our hint here. See, symbol, play. Okay, we'll do that one next. So first we need to btn underscore symbol equals button and shoot uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. funny thing is I actually wrote down the button numbers yesterday of course I could look on there let's see I think I think I think I think I think I didn't write it no I didn't write it down let's see I'm gonna go back to our schematic all right, so we've got it on four, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to cheat. Give me one second because I just want it to be the same thing. I don't want to have to re refigure it. So it is four, 17, 27, and 10. Now, if I had written that down earlier, which I did yesterday, but I did not save it, we wouldn't have to be looking at that now. So but now we know it's button 17 because like I said, I followed the same setup as they have. So button 17, all right. All right, BTN, the next one's going to be our snare. This one, our snare is on 27. Ten. Okay, now we'll close that. <gasps> See, now we're not cheating anymore. Okay, so our hint, we come up with this, and we need it to come up, and we need to add at the bottom here, just like we did, button, drum, when pressed, play, drum, play. Okay, so let's basically do the same thing with the rest of our buttons. Button, button, who's got the button? Oh, I don't need drum, I need... Uh, symbol. All right, let's see if that works. Well, if I don't say presses. All right, let's see if that works. Let's hit save, stop, save, run. Oh, we got an error message. Why we get an error message? Let's see. Can you spot the error message? Is when I feel like it's stored the Explorer. Can you spot the error in the code? Let me scooch that up. There we go. All right, so what does it say? It says, let's say name error BTN is not defined. Hmm. So what did I do? B T N. Oh, what did I do? I put a 
Uh, what does it need to be? No, we know that one worked. Oh, I put a period. Duh. Okay. So stop, save, and run. All right, let's try our buttons. And. <gasps> it's working. It's working. It's working. Okay. So let's go back to our code here and drag it up here so it's above here. <laughs> let's continue our code. All right, so BTN is going to try to help us. We need the, what do we need now? We need the snare dot win underscore press. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. Equals, and we want it to be, yeah snare dot play all right let's try that here we go There you go. Hmm. It sounds different. I don't know why that would be. It's interesting. Okay, so let's do our next one. PTN. And we're doing bell. The bell of the ball. But when dot oh, press. Bell. Play. Here we go. Uh-oh. Did I do a code wrong? Let's see. Let's see. Button bell when pressed equals bell play. Hmm. There's bell right there. Let's see. Can you spot the code error? Let's see. And it says button object is not attribute win. Okay, so what did I do? It says win. Ah, didn't do the underscore like I'm supposed to. All right, save a file now. This should work. All right. We might have it. <gasps> All right. time all right see if I can do all four <laughs> okay I know if I do that too much it'll be annoying is it already annoying it might be 
Okay, so let's do save and let's do stop our code. So now, how could we actually change it to something else if we wanted to? Okay, well, let's finish our thing here. It should come up here and show us a little bit of everything. So there's our button, there's our underscore when pressed. We do our check and let's look at the full code and kind of compare it now. Remember, my code, of course, has a little bit of extra right here. Nope, excuse me, we're a little bit of extra here to go ahead and play our sounds just as a test. But let's look and see. Import Pygame from GPIO0, so importing from the library. Pygame initiate. see drum snare bell and I actually added this the time one here's our button which is 4 17 27 and 10 okay so the cool part about it is that our wiring did work so we had our wiring properly wired <laughs> Yeah, we had our wiring properly wired. And that means everything worked properly. We got to hear all our sounds. But let's say we actually wanted to uh, change our sounds to something different. Okay. So we could do that pretty easily. Let's look and see here. Oh, let's, let's, let's look at our improving script. And we'll, so we'll finish up this exercise. And then we've got time to play around with it some. So improving your script, the code that you have written should work without any problems. However, it's generally a good idea to make your code a bit cleaner once you have a prototype that works. The next steps are completely optional. If you're happy with your script, then just leave it as is. If you want to make your script a bit cleaner, then follow the steps on this page. You can store your button objects and sounds in a dictionary and said of having to create eight different objects. Interesting. So this is a little bit different. Have a look at the steps below to learn about creating basic dictionaries and then looping over them. Okay. All right. So let's read up on dictionaries a little bit. I haven't done this before. Oh, okay. I've done it with, we, we did like a list. Let's see. A dictionary is a type of data structure in Python. It contains a series of key value pairs. Here is a very simple example. Band equals John, rhythm guitar, Paul, bass, George, lead, and Ringo. Okay. The dictionary has a name, in this case, band, and the data in, in it is surrounded by curly brackets. <laughs> Is that their official name, curly brackets? Okay, within the dictionary are the key value pairs. In this case, the keys are the names of the band members. The values are the name of the instruments they play. Keys and values are colons between them and the pair oh it's showing the it's showing the example down here and the pair where was I the values are the names of the instruments that they play keys and values have colons between them and each pair is separated by a comma you can also write dictionaries so that each key pair is written on a new line okay so So you create a new file and give it a create your own directory. You can use the, the one above or your own if you like. When you're done, save and run the code. Then switch over to the shell to have a look at the results by typing the name of the dictionary. Okay. So all I have to do is type in band. Okay. So I guess that's why they would call it dictionary because it's just a big long list. 
All right, like I said, I've dealt with something like this before, but it called it list, okay? You'll probably notice that the key value pairs are no longer in the order that you type them. They are not. That's because Python dictionaries are unordered, so you can't rely on any particular entry being on a specific position. Okay. To look up a particular value in a dictionary, you can use its key. So for instance, if you wanted to find out what instrument Ringo plays, you could type band Ringo. Okay. And then Ringo would come up as drums because they're connected. Dictionary can store all types of data so you can use them to store numbers, strings, variables, list of even other dictionaries. Okay. Looping other dictionaries with Python. All right. Like the data structure in Python, you can iterate over dictionaries. Remember the order of keys in a dictionary can be unpredictable. Unpre if you simply iterate excuse me, over a dictionary with a for loop, you will only be literating over the keys. Take the diction this dictionary for example. Okay. You can literate iterate, excuse me, over it with a for loop like this for member and band print member. Okay, for member and band print member. This will produce that. If you want to get the keys and the values, you'll need to specify this in for your loop for member instrument in band item print member instrument. Remember print means it puts it, displays it on the screen. This will give the following Ringo bass John rhythm. Okay. Let's create a dictionary that uses the button as keys and the sounds as values. Button sounds. You can now loop over the dictionary to tell the program to play the sound when the button is pressed. For button sound in button sounds items button when press sound play okay I was hoping it was going to get it teach us to get it to play a sound randomly that's kind of what I was expecting <laughs> mobile disco okay so let's play around with this we'll see how far we can get let me see Let's create a dictionary to use um, button as a key and the sound as the values. So when you type in for button sound in button sounds, button when press sound okay uh, do I need let's see do I need Dictionary to use the button as the sound. So uh, 
Oh, so that's a sub. Can I use that, I guess? So they're not copy everything. <laughs> so just the dictionary. sounds mixer I'm not fully grasping this concept let's see maybe we need to read over it again first create a dictionary use the button as a key and the sounds are values so buttons gives the full code okay Okay, so this is button four. Okay, well, let's try it. Um, let's see. All right, so if I run it. Comparing the two, so instead of having to make this up here and then do this down here, now it's all together. Okay. Hmm. Still think that that would seem a little confusing for a new student. Hmm. Okay. So, learn something new. There we go. <laughs> Challenge mode of mobile disco. Can you use different sounds in your program? Can you add more buttons for a greater variety of instruments? Can you add some LEDs to your project and make them blink whenever a sound is played? Ah. Uh, yeah, we could. It would be separate though. If we went back to our LEDs, but yeah, we could do that. That could be a fun future project. All right, let's see. Congratulations on completing the GPIO Music Box project. We'd love to know where you think about the project. Less confident. There we go. More confident. And what does it want us to do next? Oh, it's going to suggest other projects. Okay. So, 
Oh, there's the classic, there's the whoopee cushion right there. Okay, so let's go back here. And we mess around with our sounds a little bit. And I'm a big believer in, we mess with our code. Let's go back to our original code. And one of the things we can do is we're actually gonna change our buttons to something else. And I'm thinking about how could I make the sound be random? So give me a moment and I'm actually gonna look back over other project because we did do random and I guess we'll play around with that and see if we can make it do a random sound when we hit the button of course we could set up an LED if we wanted to we'll see if we have time for that let's see while true on and off that's how we could make it loop if we wanted to Okay, let's try that now. So when I hit a button, we'll say, which one do we want to, to make loop? So we could have it, so one of our buttons, when our sound starts, we can make it loop. Let's see, it'll be down here when I do the play. While true, so button press. Now, some of this I'm going to just kind of guessing at what our code would be. Let's see. So there's our while true LED on. Of course, that would probably keep doing it until I told it to stop with the button. So let's see here. Do we want to do that or we want to make it? Let me look at the random code first. See what we can do with our random code. There's our wait for press button, wait for press. You pushed me. Let's see. There's our on right there. Wait for press LED on. Sleep three. I think we could do that real quick. Let's see. While true. So let's look at our random, import random or import randent. And our code actually goes about telling it to let's see. So that would be about making a list, I think. That might be beyond our little scope of what we've learned today. Let's go ahead, I think I'm gonna mess around with the LED and get it to blink. I think that would be a neat thing to do. Okay, so if I add the while true to our first part of its playing, and if I add the while true here, it'll just continuously loop 
Okay. And we do have to put it in So, but then how can I get it to all true down here? With button press, hmm. All right, so let's try out the wild true on our code just as with our little test, okay? So this isn't really a it's got to be this isn't really a test of our buttons this is just a test of our while true so it should continuously loop that until I hit stop Oh, and I don't have a sleep at the end, so I actually need to add a sleep. Because while it's looping back, it goes back up to the top. Okay. Okay, so that's our while true there. Now, let's cut that, and I'm gonna, that should still work. Let's see. Ah, did not like being, uh, being um, indented there, interesting, without the while true. So this is the play. So if we actually have a while true, do I have to have that after? Hmm. I'm not sure. I haven't done this with this code before. So while pressed equals, we'll probably get a big error on this. Let's do a while and see what happens ah okay let's see let's see what happens nope it doesn't send oh that's all I get I don't get a what to do let's see when pressed while true See, I'm sure there's a code that I could do it where I'm holding down the button and it continuously plays. And if I release it, okay, so it did not like that at all. Okay, let's see, line 24, while true, syntax error, invalid syntax, okay. So, nope, still didn't like it. Let's see, when pressed. I'll play. Let's see if I can find something real quick.
Okay. I was talking about code to program the robot. Okay, that might be what I'm looking for. Let's see. <laughs> it's just showing. Oh, okay. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. Let's see. It's just for any code, fastest code inside the loop doesn't execute. to get it to play the drum loop twice does it not like that at all yep does not like that at all I could ignore this down here. Playlist support, okay. Play it. To do play real oh not sure what that means. It's not actually the one we're doing because ours is this pie game. Okay. 
mixer sound. Type in mixer. I say sound on it. Guess that would be something else we could play around with. Mixer. It's almost like a, a player controls pause. Okay, I don't think that's what we need. Okay, so we did that. That's what we have in our code. So pause. Unpause, fade out, let's see, find, there it is, sound, okay. Create a new sound object from the file or buffer object, mixer sound, okay, file name, Need object, buffer, Information on the sound. Here's play, stop a sound. I guess the play would just automatically play it. So if you put this here, it would just play it, I believe. Let's see. So if I decide to put little hashtags here. The hashtag just makes it so you can do comments, but it just takes the, the code so it won't run the code. So if I actually typed in, let's see, I gain dot mixer dot, this has to be capital sound, looks like sound. Dot play and then had like let's say all of that it 
think it means it just plays the sound instead of having to name everything now to use our buttons to play we have to label it but this might just be play this sound let's see nope did not like something I did let's see play mixer sound play play requires a sound object but receive a string okay hmm Game mixer sound play. So I guess it doesn't just play it, it needs more instructions or more reading. Let's see, file name Python object. See the strings, the sound object represents the actual sound sample data. Let's see, load the audio file, uncompress wave file. Loops. The way controls how many times sound will be repeated after being played the first time. Value five mean that the sound will be played once. Default zero. Sound loop. Maximum play. Channel. Let's see, stop, fade out, set volume. Get length. My the channels. Okay, it was an idea to kind of play around with here, but I think we can get our little LED to blink at us. So let's go ahead and erase that. Be the for future to check out. And let's go ahead and I'm actually going to grab our little LEDs for us. We should be able to get it to light up for us. Okay, so got a little packet of LEDs. We've got our resistors too. So if we look back at our other handouts, 
So it kind of suggests it, kind of setting it up so it has an LED that pops up with a little disco. <laughs> we know how to do different sounds. We can change our sounds here by we have our list in there. Can you add more buttons? Yeah, we could do that. But let's mess around with our little LEDs, okay? So if we go back to our first handout, we talk about our LEDs, turning them on. Turn our LED on and off. So we're going to do our code there, and I'm going to go ahead and pick out a color. Mm, how about we do blue? Okay. Let's see. Where is my mouse? There it is. is disappearing for some reason okay so we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to do our long leg short leg connection here and we've got our resistor if we go back up here we've got a little bit more information about our resistor hold on so here's our resistor I'm not sure why, but it doesn't my mouse doesn't want to be seen. Huh. It's really strange. Okay. Anyway. There it is. It's back for some reason. And now it's disappeared. <laughs> it's really odd. Okay. So I don't know why it's not doing that. Okay, so. Got our LED, got our resistor. Let's go ahead and let me grab the wire. So we have our box of goodies. <laughs> so we need our wire. It's the other wires I need, so I'll be back. All right, now, two of these. I'll take the rest of these away. Now, let's fire. And just like in our handout, it needs to be going from long leg to short leg I believe it's long leg to short leg 
me check and make sure here. Oh. Yep, long leg to short leg. And you kind of put this anywhere on here. Go across the river with our resistor. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our wires and everything are set up properly. Oh, I can use that for ground. I can use the same ground. So I'm going to get a mail to mail. GPIO pin list here. And we want to try it out with our three volts of power to make sure our LED works. And look, it works. Okay, so our circuit is complete. Now, what we want to do is we want to put it on a different GPIO, I mean, a GP uh, general purpose pin. So I know that all those are taken up. Why don't we go ahead and we'll put it on, let's see, so we've got, let's see, which one is open? Two is open. So I'll connect it to two. Hmm. Well, you shouldn't be blinking if you're on two. Only three you should be lighting up. Huh. Okay. That's two, and that's three. Okay. Hmm. So is that the way because the buttons are set up? Let's see. Because I'm not running. Well, don't hear anything. Hmm. sure why that would have power right now. <laughs> Unless I need to plug it in separately to the ground and then it won't have power. If it's on ground, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Okay, so we'll just do it this way. And our ground is, so I got plug in three on the right. And we need to plug it into, let's see, is one on the bottom? Okay, the bottom left is the ground. And our, uh, we'll just kind of keep it separate, make it 21. So let's see, see if it's working. Okay. If we plug it in 21, we should not be getting it to light up. There it is. There it is. Okay. So it just needs to be plugged into its own ground, I guess. 
I guess those buttons are excited. <laughs> okay, so now let's go ahead and look at our code here. And we are, what number was it? It was 22, I believe. Uh, 21, 21. So remember lucky number 21. We are running close on time here, so hopefully we can do a little bit here. So first I need to bring the LED on, okay. So I need to type that in. I'm gonna do it at, let me see, see if I can, can I resave this as something else? Mm. Does it do save as? Don't see where it does save as, so, okay. No, okay, so. At least we can have the light come on before we finish here. Okay, so from T P I O C E R O import. LED equals what number was it? 21, that's right. Okay, now if we where's our button press? So I'm trying to remember exactly how we should best do that. Of our button, so button it's four, and our button is that one is set up to four. So wait to press. Oh, hang on. So we go down here, wait for button press. Button is on four. So we have LED. 21 we have hope that that, would that count that's the drum one so if I have another button mm, okay I'm not sure if this code will work but we're gonna try it hopefully it won't say some kind of it'll probably be messy or something so we already got the button we already got LED equals. Okay, so we're just I'm just gonna do my normal code because remember we're trying stuff out here. So button equals. Oh, I'm basically putting lowercase button because all of this is something that's something else. So I'm making a new new variable called button and I am putting it GPI04. So button wait for and it might mess up the other code I'm not sure because we're testing something out here Tell it to stay on for three seconds, then an LED. Okay, let's try it. Now we're not going to get our initial music here, in which if this code works properly, when we press the button, the LED light will come on, and also it'll play the song. I mean, play the the drum. 
Probably gonna get an error message. Yep, a bunch of error messages. Okay. Yep, there you go. Pin four is already in use. Eh, okay, so that's what I was hoping wouldn't happen. Okay, so how exactly do you get the button and uh I could wire it so I could do it cheaply without a code. I could wire it on the other side of the button, so that made the LED light come on. Okay, I'll be cheap real quick. Okay. So, need another one of those. But we're a little bit over time, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this real quick. And this will be kind of a cheap way to do this because I wanted to do it digitally, but we still want our light to come on when we press our button, don't we? Okay, so that's what we're going to get to happen real quick. Okay, come on, get out of there. Get out of there. There you go. So, I basically take my light. Send it to take the green and put it on three bolts of power. It'll light up. Okay. But if I bypass that and my take my little thing of wiring up here. This row. So the light, the LED should light up when I press the button now. If I have it all set up properly. <laughs> There we go. Okay, well, <laughs> at least I can do it that way. How about that? I'll have to work on it at a different time, I guess. Well, anyway, so we did get our LED to light up at least. We did get our little buttons to load as well. And we've kind of come to the end of our, our project. Oh, it re re rebooted for some reason. But we did get our main parts done with getting our little music machine to work. So, for the last time, here we go. Oh, shoot. Right. together all right well there you go <laughs> all right well thank you for joining me today hope you enjoyed class we learned a lot didn't we we played around we got our project mainly to work now we did get our project to work. We tried to mess around and augment it. Except for our LED lighting up. That didn't work out. But hey, 
we got we're doing experiments so don't forget we've got some other classes coming up as well um, and this afternoon we're going to be doing our PowerPoint class and also not we're going to take a, a we'll be gone for a week and then we'll be back on the 22nd with our photography classes and everything don't forget that our libraries are open with limited services and hours uh, curbside holds pickup is available you can go to gchrl.org for more details and don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel uh, remember we need a hundred uh, subscribers so that we can get our own uh, custom uh, address or you can just search for GCHRL videos and find our channel that way well thank you for joining me today it was fun <laughs> we tried a whole bunch of new stuff now didn't we and I think this was a rousing success for our Raspberry Pi projects with Alex. So have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Stay safe.